we are excited to bring in one of our local mayors, Rob Kelman. He is the mayor of our fine city, my favorite city, Kegel Harbor. Although, Mayor Kelman, I will say, I think uh, Kegel is kind of a secret that's about to explode. I don't know if we want people to know about us. Well, I, I, I'll, I'll welcome you to, uh, you know, tout our, our good city and all the successes we're about to see in the, in the near future. So go for it. We are. So Kegel Harbor, the heart of the lakes. We have so many great things going on in the city. However, this has been a tough time for all cities. I think one thing that might come out of the pandemic that could be a good thing for all of us is we've really come to understand and realize the importance of some of our local leaders and people such as yourself who are leading us through this pandemic. This can't be an easy time, even six months into this. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, 2020, you know, is a lot of people say it's been a, a challenging year. Um, and, and the way we've dealt with it, um, me as the mayor and our council, we're always looking for credible information, um, looking for resources that can help us make good decisions and help our community. Um, we're looking for ways we can improve the safety and health of our staff at City Hall and also the residents. And uh, we've been fortunate that uh, we've interacted with people at the county level um, who've helped us out immensely and some of our neighbors. Um, we've got a, a great fire department. Um, we are part of the Tri-City Fire Department and we work with West Bloomfield, extremely professional. And our police force, they've been really outstanding throughout the whole you know, past six, seven months, showing up every day, doing a great job and, and really supporting our whole community. We're six months into this. Are you getting, is it getting easier to try to manage all the different facets of this crisis and this pandemic or is it still changing every single day you know when we first um were exposed to it back in march of course it's this big unknown and nobody really understood it um you know working with of course the oakland county health department i think they've been and the oakland county executive office they've been really good about disseminating information to us and helping us understand what steps we can take to help uh, secure things. So, you know, it, it's never easy when you're dealing with something like this, but, um, you know, we've had experience now. And I think as a council, we've um, we've listened to some some of the people who are involved uh, at the expert level and we're making some good decisions to help us move forward. And um, so in that sense, it's a little bit easier for us. Um, I think, you know, we're into it, we understand. Uh, even some of the, the medical doctors know, um, they're understanding the ways it's spread so we can take the, the right precautions. And fortunate, we've got some grant money coming in to help us secure City Hall and some of the um, some of our uh, parks and things like that. So we're, we're safe. Mayor Robert Kalman with us on the Oakland County Megacast, joining us from the city of Kegel Harbor. He is their mayor uh, in the city at this moment in time. Um, and Mayor Kalman, we talk a lot about the grant, about the grant funding that's come in to help keep city services a lot uh, running smoothly and to help support some programs that to help support our local businesses as we're heading into the colder months of the year we're in the into the thick of fall and we're approaching winter has there been any discussions at the city level to similar to what happened in the spring early on in the pandemic to help local businesses particularly retail and restaurants that may have to move mo a, a significant portion of their business back indoors because of the cold weather all uh, right. Yeah. Thanks, Tyler. I think you remember we uh, put a, an ordinance together this past spring to expand the outdoor seating to help the restaurants uh, weather the storm. They, you know, we have reduced capacity inside, so we let them expand outside for seating and um, hopefully pick up some additional revenue. Um, you know, it, it's up to the individual business owners how they want to pursue that and, and we're going to think about ways we can help out, but you know, we, as we move back into the colder weather months and people aren't able to sit outside, um, hopefully the restaurants are going to be, the business owners are going to think of some creative ways to, um, to, to help their, um, their activity and, and the revenue stream. And I've been pretty vocal. I've, uh, I get a Key Harbor Facebook page myself that I help administer. It's a personal page. 
you know, asking residents to support our local businesses. Uh, some of them, I'm, I know that like, like you know, so they're very fortunate. They've been around so long. So their carry out business is helping to sustain them. Although I'm sure they're missing some of their, their uh, larger events. Mayor Kelman with us here on the Oakland County Megacast. What has this been like to try to attract new businesses into the area? Yeah, it's interesting. We're we're involved with uh, the Gibbs Group right now, and we did a, a residential and a retail study about eight nine months ago, and we're looking at next steps to um, continue our engagement with the Gibbs Group, and it's going to be actually part of our discussion at our study session in October on the thirteenth. And uh, we're actually going to invite TIFA, which helped the Tax Increment Finance Authority and the Planning Commission are going to come join us at the study session, and we're going to discuss ways to continue the engagement. And it's really interesting because with the Gibbs Group, what you're doing um, is working with a a world-renowned planning group that's gonna help us create, if you will, a walkable downtown village, sort of like an up north vibe, but here in Oakland County. Um, And uh, what we're really gonna do is create, hopefully, an environment where business owners want to invest in, 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 really what it takes to help a business owner want to invest is also having residents want to build their homes here. So you have people who are going to be walking throughout and supporting the local community. So what we'll do, hopefully, if uh, our TIF and planning agree with the council, is uh, continue the study and um, create some additional collateral, if you will, and create some documentation, which is going to signal to the business community and and and, and um, investors, they want to come to Kego Harbor because one, it's it, it's got a network of people, a population that will support their businesses. Also, I think it's going to um, show, it, let me backtrack a second. One of the parts of the study, which I really found most fascinating when he presented to us a few months ago, is that within a 15 minute drive of Kego Harbor, we rival the buying power of any community in Oakland County, if not exceed it. And part of that's, you know, we're right next to Sylvan Lake, we're right next to Cast Lake, so there's a lot of water, and the, it's very attractive to build some homes. And um, so I, I think that, you know, to your original point, what are we doing to help businesses see Kego Harbor? We're going to work with the Gibbs Group a little bit more, and we're going to, of course, um, uh, listen to some of the things that we learned at the Open County One Stop Ready program, which I attended a few years ago with Gino Santia and our city manager and another council member at the time ways to make it pretty easy for a business owner to come into town so it's 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 a seamless process from idea to to planning to building and and and, and, you know give them the ease of knowing that when they come to kigo they're not going to have a lot of red tape to go through so their business can um, be successful and thrive it's a long answer for your question but uh, no, no, not at all. And as uh, a lot of people do know, or, you know, I am a resident of Kiko Harbor. We moved in, I want to mm-hmm. say back in 2006. And when we first moved in, we did have some of the coffee shops and those little stores that uh, have since gone away. And I miss that. I miss being able to go to Big B Coffee. Mm-hmm. If you remember that, that tells you how long we've been there sitting yeah. by the fireplace. It's a computer shop now, I think. Yeah, yes. And they're even moving now, too. So with that... Um, what is it if you had a magic wand what would it look like because we do have quite a few businesses on that strip that have been mm-hmm. closed for quite some time and mm-hmm. then the two empty lots on the corner there as well of cast lake right the, the cast lake and orchard lake i think you're referring to which is where um it's some city-owned property yeah and you know if i had that if i can envision what i think it would look like um, of course, you'd have to work with the community, and that's what we're doing. When we're working with Gibbs and other, we also redid our master plan. We we had groups of citizens, residents of the community, actively engaging with the planners to help decide how we want the city to look. So it's important that it's not just my opinion, but we're engaging with the residents, and um, we can make decisions to move the city forward. But I have to respect the city's history and some of the long-term residents. Um, because there's, it's like the rubber, the tension with the rubber bands. You want to go in one direction, but the other, you know, it pulls you back a little bit. Um, I, with the Gibbs group, he showed, and I don't know if you've seen, I wish um, I, I should have taken the, the picture and shown you, created some sketches to, to some of the cities he's worked with before. And so it, it, it's some of the, if you think of an up north community, 
where you had this walkable downtown village and we can almost superimpose that within the Cass Lake and Orchard Lake area and and uh, create that walkable, the, the cool vibe where people can walk from restaurants to maybe a, a shared parking lot somewhere. Um, that's one of the issues we faced at times is we've got a lot of uh, potential, but we have to figure out how to handle the parking situation. Um, and, and so I, I think some of that is where we're looking. And I think engaging with Gibbs and engaging with some of the other developers that have approached me because there are some talks right now about developing some of the property behind Santia. There's an empty lot back there um, behind Bachelors. And there's also talk about redeveloping some of the strip malls, resurfacing, re, you know, re-imaging them um, at the other side of Cass and Orchard where you're referring to. So there are some ongoing discussions. Um, and I, I think that you're going to see some movement. I think right now, a lot of people are a little gun shy, they being some of the developers because of construction costs and uh, supply costs, the raw material costs have gone up quite a bit with the pandemic. So I think they're right now looking to have things stabilize a little bit. Some exciting news, though. It sounds like the yeah. old uh, Johnny Rockets is going to reopen. Uh, I think yeah, I saw yeah. that Somebody, on your yeah. Facebook page. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Somebody just leased it the other day. There's going to be a, uh, from what I understand, a, a restaurant similar to what Hunter House is in Birmingham. So that's going to be sometime in November. I think some of, one of the social media sites exploded when uh, that news came out. People were pretty happy. Yeah, that um, building's been sitting empty for quite some time. Well, I think in yeah. 2018, our population in, in the city of Kiko was just over 3,400. What are things looking like for the census now? Are people actually filling it out? You know, it, it was with COVID, it was a little challenge with uh, I've seen the census workers, in fact, in your neighborhood um, the other day, I, I saw them with their masks on walking around trying to get people to fill out the census uh, form if they didn't do it online. Um, of course, it's always important. And I believe the date, which was supposed to be sort of soon, was extended to the end of October so people can fill it out. And uh, it, 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 yeah, the, the numbers are probably going to be pretty stable right around now 3000 is the rough estimate i'd expect it to be right around there when the census is done um so it's it's right in that neighborhood robert kalman with us on the oakland county megacast he is the mayor of the city of kiko harbor today uh, joining us on the program um mayor kalman with the schools back in session there uh, there's of course roosevelt elementary school that's right next mm -hmm. to kiko harbor city hall and and then very close to to just the out just outside the Kegel Harbor city limits it's Abbott Middle School as well um, mm -hmm. how much of a focus has been put on the safety of those schools being that they are operating at different times than normal we've talked a little right. bit about that with Chief Fitzgerald what's the response been like from the community in, in terms of the parents and, and the teachers on site uh, on those days where they are in person yeah, I, I you know it's uh, they've been very appreciative because Chief Fitzgerald and the Kiko Police Force they've been uh, very upfront with drivers in the community. They actually will park a squad car in the turn lane for you know not to obstruct the Orchard Lake Cass Lake Road turn, but they, I've seen them with their lights on at the early morning drop off and the late morning um, pickup, the uh, early afternoon drop off, the late afternoon pickup. Um, and they're just they're out there they're very visible it's one of the things i like about our police force they're they're friendly and they're um they interact with the residents with the business owners and it's not like they're hiding in a corner um uh, playing a game of gotcha they're just out there they're 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 showing people hey slow down um most people know that you know when you go into a school zone it's 25 miles an hour but because of the different drop-off times I assume Chief uh, Fitzgerald talked to you about this. People might not be aware that uh, you need to slow down um, at different times of the day now in Cass Lake. And uh, I think we, he's had pretty good uh, partnership with the Orchard Lake Police Department because Orchard Lake Middle School is actually in, excuse me, um, Abbott. Orchard Lake is, of course, the one over on uh, further down West Bloomfield. Abbott is actually parked right in the city of Orchard Lake Village. So um, part of it appears to be in Kigo Harbor because it's right across us. If you walk across the street, it's Kigo Harbor. But we're working in close collaboration with that um, uh, and the, uh, the actually the Orchard Lake Police Department to handle that one. So it's very visible. Mayor Robert Kelman with us here on the Oakland County Megacast. Uh, Mayor, 
everyone had to pretty much go virtual during the pandemic. How is that going? I know sometimes for city meetings with the comment period and sessions, it can get a little confusing. But do you think it could be something that sticks around after this crisis is over? And wait, let me unmute myself. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, you know, we, we've had a few where people start talking and we have to remind them to uh, hit that unmute button. Um, you know, I, I'm pretty comfortable with it. Like I, I think I've told people before, I have a technology company. And, and even having that technology company, I still catch myself having to hit the unmute button. Just want to be polite and not leave it, uh, you know, unmuted while people are talking. I, you know, I've heard both ways. Some people love the in-person. And, you know, we're, we're going to have to uh, think about when we start having in-person meetings again. And it's the jury's out on that one. Um, and we'll, we'll see how that moves. But I personally, I enjoy, um, I'd like to see people face-to-face. Uh, -face, but, you know, I'm okay with the virtual for right now. Um, we have uh, the ability to um, have the chat feature. We can have the uh, the questions and answers can still be done that way. I think I said the last time we guys we spoke with each other, there have been people who have asked me to keep, even when we go back to in person meetings, keep the Zoom feature because they can. Um, you know, we have call in questions at the end of the meeting where they pick up the phone, they call, they talk to a, a clerk, and they ask the, the clerk would write down their question. With Zoom, they can actually engage one-on-one -on -one with us for well, well, five if it's a council but they can ask a question on screen and um they feel that's a little bit more interactive and they feel a little bit more part of the meeting if they're sitting at home we actually now um we'll look at some uh you know virtual meeting policies for our boards and commissions because uh you know it's it'd be helpful if they're um out on business and they can still partake in a meeting if they're out of um out of town so so it, it's working. It's, you know, is it ideal? Nah, people would love to be in person, but this is what we have. I would imagine it's also a good feature, though. Like if I have kids, I can be at home, cook dinner, help them with their homework mm -hmm. and not have to take time out of my schedule or maybe even take them up to the meeting uh, with me yeah. as well. So there yeah, are some benefits to everything. Well. Yeah, absolutely. So just over 30 days until election days. Uh, I know here in, in Kegel, it's not really a big thing. We have the one polling place. Uh, yeah. How did it seem like things went really well for the primary? Are you guys ready for the November election? I think so. I think you know we have um, we secured a grant from the state of Michigan, so we actually purchased an additional um, ballot reader. Um, and so we've always had, uh, if you voted in Kiko Harbor, one, you, you vote, and then they, you scan your ballot into the machine. We now have a second one, um, which is going to be exclusive for the absentee voters. And we set up an absentee voting board um, to help secure those. But there's a whole process. It was really eye-opening is what you have to do. And I know people are concerned about mail-in or absentees. And um, so they, they, there's a whole process that's being followed to make sure that's happening so i think we're going to be in good shape and you know, you know you, you never know it's election season there's signs i've seen a few signs yeah it's yeah. real quickly before we have to let you go uh, trigger treating it's such a huge deal in the city of kegel yeah. harbor because of the way our city is laid out a lot right. of people have been concerned that the city was going to cancel trigger treating anything you want the public to know about that issue you know i one we're i'm not canceling that i mean that's you know, we'll see what the governor wants to do, and uh, there'll probably be some recommendations as to safe ways families can engage with their children. Um, so, I mean, stay tuned as to what the state and, and the health departments have to say on that one. But, you know, it's been a rough time for a lot of kids. And, you know, that one, you know, there's going to be there's going to have to be some safe ways that can still take place. Um, social distance, trick or treating families, maybe leaving candy further out um, so you don't have that close contact. But uh, uh, especially in some of the neighborhoods where it's been such a big activity over the years in Kigo Harbor that uh, they're going to have to figure out a way to do it safely and um, and move forward with that. Mayor Kalman, thank you so much for taking time to yeah. be with us. We appreciate it.